right. Shalom, Israel. I'm preaching all myself a thousand times. And I'm teaching the ISBK history class in Florida. All right. Today class is going to be about the Rosewood Massacre. This happened in Rosewood, Florida, right next to Gainesville, Florida. All right. Everybody know about the University of Florida, the Gators. Okay, this place is right next door to Gainesville, Florida, man. Okay. And we're gonna read about it. Uh Shabbat Zah, you got the article? Kind of a car. All right, go ahead. All right, kind of a car. Rosewood Massacre. The Ro the Rosewood Massacre was an attack on the predominantly African American town of Rosewood, Florida. All right. Okay, static. Okay. Rosewood was a predominantly black town. I mean, mostly black people stayed in this town. Okay. And we're gonna read about why did they get killed? Why did they get massacred? Why was it well there's a great genocide in this town called Rosewood? All right. We're gonna read about it in this article. Read on. In 1923, by large groups of white aggressors, the town was entirely destroyed by the end of the violence, and the residents were driven out permanently. Okay, these white, these white aggressors, these white aggressors was a uh, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, other white mobs. The, the original gangsters, okay. When you want to read about some gangsters, the Ku Klux Klan, the police, them are the real gangsters, okay. Your judge, these lawyers, all of them work together. They are the gangsters, man. They don't want to get, they don't want to do crimes and get away with doing crime to us, all right. Them are the real, original gangsters. Those are the OGs, all right. You ain't no gangster. Black and Hispanic man, all right? Go ahead and read, Ward. Got on The story was mostly forgotten until the 1980s when it was revived and brought to public attention. Okay. This history about these people getting killed in Rosewood, it got erased. Why people try to erase this history? And it, and it got erased for a lot of years until some black man or black woman dug it back up. That's what it mean by revive. Somebody came along and dug this story back up. And this is what we do in the ISBK. We go back into history and dig it back up. Esau might have thought that we forgot about it, us as black, black Hispanics and Native American Indians. But the priests and prophets of the Lord in the ISBK, we do not forget. And we do dig up the past. We do do history. And we don't let these devils get away with nothing. All right? Con, so you want the next paragraph? Con. All right. Rosewood, Florida. Though it was originally settled in 1845 by both black and white people, black colds and Jim Crow laws in the years after the Civil War fostered segregation in Rosewood. Sluggy. It said uh, that Rosewood first was settled by white and black people, right? But something had happened. Something happened where this town became all black, okay? And not just white and black no more. And we're going to read about how did this town become all black. Okay? Read, Warrior. Khan. And much of the South. Employment was provided by pencil factories. But the cedar tree population soon became uh, decimated, so like a decimated and white families moved away in the 19 in the 1890s and settled in the nearby town of Summer. By the 1920s, Rosewood. Mm -hmm. So now we see how Rosewood became 
predominantly black because of no jobs being there for white people. Okay? So black people end up staying in that town and the white people left. Okay? Read. Cut on cut. By the 1920s, Rosewood's population of about 200 was entirely made up of black citizens, except for one white family that ran the general store there. Fanny Taylor. Fanny Taylor, on January no, no, 1st. Stop, stop right there, Ward. Stop right there. It's a lock. It's not right there. Read that part where it said, and this is very important. This is very vital. Okay? Read that part where it said it was just one white family. One white family. You know how white people say, you can trust me. Uh, I'm not racist. I love all black people. We can, we can get along, right? This was one white family that was in this black community, man. All it takes is one. All right? All it takes is one to bring down a whole nation of people. Of black people, Hispanic people, it just take one devil, man. One devil. That's why we shouldn't trust now one of them. Okay. The Lord, the Lord told us that we should be separated from the womb from Esau. And I, the Lord is right. You, you, you see what's going on with us, right? By us not obeying the Lord, by not staying away from these Edomites that He told us to stay away from from the womb, we are dying. So the Lord's word is true. And Christianity is a lie, man. All right? Read word. Come, come. By the 1920s, Rosewood's population of about 200 was entirely made up of black citizens, except for one white family that ran the general store there. Fanny Taylor. On January 1st, 1923, in Summer, Florida, 22-year-old Fanny Taylor was heard screaming by a neighbor. The neighbor found Taylor covered in bruises and claiming a black man had entered the house and assaulted her. Hey, hey, Salaki. Salaki. The cry of a white woman is known to bring down black people, our race. The cry of a white woman brought down Black Wall Street. The rape of a white woman brought down the Black Panthers. The cry of a white woman brought down Rosewood. The lust of a white woman made Martin Luther King join his people to these damn devils, man. Okay? When we gonna learn that devil cake, your love for devil cake ain't right. <laughs> know what I mean? And what I mean by devil cake, I'm talking about Becky. I'm talking about Karen. Leave the, these damn devils alone, man. Let these devils be. Let the white man have his white woman. Understand me? Let that devil have his white woman. Because she's a damn devil too. She's no good for us, all right? But but these Negroes, they are weak. They are so weak, and they always fall to their nasty lust for white women, for that damn devil cake, man. When black and Hispanic women look way better than these damn devils, man. All right? But our, our, our brothers, they got a strange lust. And their lust, so, their lust is so strong for the white woman that they don't care about putting their people in danger. All right. Back then in Rosewood, a, a brother messing with a white woman, this problem was a goddamn lie. Know what I mean, this, this, this had to be a lie. Oh, oh, know what I mean, it couldn't be true. And now, uh, when you we read the history, uh, uh, me, uh, you go behind the story, you'll read about how these white women tell lies on, on brothers, you know, just to see the fall of a race of people, which is our people, man. Being married to white women 
Interracial marriage is no good for our community, man. But marrying white women is not good for black people, I mean, and Hispanic people. Okay, it's no good for us. It's something that we need to stop doing. All right? We need to learn how to control these demons, these this disgusting behavior. All right? Because it's disgusting to date a white woman. Do you know white women lay down with dogs? White women lay down with some nasty things, man. And you have the nerve to lay down with this beast, this animal, this dog of a woman. Even Christ called a white woman a dog, man. Okay? Black men don't have no business defiling themselves with white women. Okay? And having children with white women. You, you, you are polluting your seed, man. Making your race weak. Okay? And also, you putting your race in danger. Because you don't know when that white woman going to have a desire to kill a nigga or see a nigga dead. This is what white people do. Sometimes they desire to see a nigga dead, man. And this white woman that was working in Rosewood, one day she woke up out of her bed and had a desire to see some niggas die. So she made up a story about a black man raping her or assaulting her. Read, Warrior. Come on, sir. I got two scriptures if you want, sir. For the uh, really? I got the first one, you know, I want to bring out for that one, you know, where it says, uh, except for one white family that ran the general store there. I got a scripture for that. Go ahead, Warren. Um, no, you know what? Okay, for what you was referring to. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 2. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. We'll go ahead and break that down. Go ahead. Nah, because you know, you know, this uh, you know, Fanny Taylor, you know, she's talking about. You know, uh, she claimed that a black man entered her house or whatnot. You know what I mean? She claimed that a black man assaulted her, but. Well, I guess that, you know, that scripture don't really describe because she, she claimed the black man assaulted her, but that black man was not really, you know. Um wasn't really you know with this with her it's just an accusation but see i i see what you're trying to say right Th that one white family being a part of our community it shouldn't have been so us us when we had that community predominantly being black we should have got rid of them or oh, oh, we should have separated from them. You know what white people do? Once a black man move in the neighborhood or a black family move in their neighborhood, you know what white people do? What, what do they do? They move. And why do they move? They, they move what? because... They move because they feel like, you know, us moving in their neighborhoods is going to, uh, you know, lower their, uh, you know, they feel like we're going to destroy the neighborhood or whatnot. That's correct. And that's how we should feel about them. Because, believe it or not, they are going to destroy our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is not going to be back no more. Our neighborhood is going to be. I mean, 
took over took over by them. Okay, our neighbor our neighborhood might be black, but it's not gonna have no black businesses. Okay, no my neighborhood staying black. They just don't want us having no businesses. All right. Right here, you see what's going on. This white family had a had a store there. They had a business there, right? And guess what this, this family had in their mind? This family had in their mind that they want they probably want to take over Rosewood. They want to take over Rosewood. You know what I mean? Ain't no telling what they was thinking. But whatever they was thinking, it had to do with them want to be in rulership. They want to be over niggas. You know what I mean? So this, this white woman came up with this with this story. And we're going to read on in the article about how her husband made the story more bigger, more of a lie to bring more white people to destroy the city of Rosewood, man. Okay? Or the town of Rosewood. So, so let's read on. Come on, come. Let's, let's read that. Uh, let's finish that scripture. You want to finish the Deuteronomy one? Correct. Oh God. Verse 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. It says, But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. See, when Christopher Columbus came, when Christopher Columbus came to America, and the Indians seen him, him and his white Jesus, with him and his damn Christianity, the Indians should have cast down their, their, that false god, man. All right? They should give a damn about their religion, man. But our people, our people, man, they fall weak to the white man's philosophy all the time. One white man and his philosophy could take down a whole nation, man. And that's what happened to the Native American Indian. This is what happened to Rosewood. These, these Negroes had love for these white people. Okay? What these white people did in return? They got Rosewood burnt down to the ground, man. Now, Rosewood is a city where nobody stays at. Rosewood don't even exist no more. Rosewood is a... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Rosewood is just a historical site for you to go see now. Nobody stays there. Nobody stays there. And that's what happens when you deal with white people, man. You're not going to have nothing. And your history is going to get erased. And you're not going to have no businesses. Because white people, they're not satisfied with just having all the stores and all the business. White, white people want your spirit, man. White, white people want your soul. White, white people want to be God. Okay, and they, they'll do whatever it takes in a cowardly way to get what they want. They'll, they'll do whatever it takes by even telling the goddamn lie to get what they want. And that's what this white woman did. I mean, and her husband. And we're going to read about it. All right, go ahead. Got on, God. For thou art an holy people unto the, the Lord thy God. We're going to read the article, boy. The article. Okay, Connor, Connor. The incident was reported to Sheriff Robert Elias Walker with Taylor specifying that she had not been raped. Fanny Taylor's husband, James Taylor, a foreman at the local mill, escalated the situation by gathering an angry mob of white citizens to hunt down the culprit. The he culprit. Also... The culprit. Uh, what, does I... what, what do the culprit mean? What's the definition of a culprit? Got on car. Got it. The culprit. Got it right here. Hold on. Culprit. A person who's responsible for a crime. Mm -hmm. 
or other misdeed. It's like a criminal. Yes, another word for a criminal. Okay, this is another word for a criminal. You got that right on the head, warrior. All right. They, they, they are looking for this criminal. This black, this black criminal, man. And it and it says, it says that the incident was reported to Sheriff Robert Elias Walker with Taylor, the lady herself, specifying that she had not been raped. So she said, you know, that she wasn't raped. That's what she told the sheriff. But they still they still went and gathered a white mob to go hunt this brother down. After she already said she hasn't been raped. She ain't nothing happened to her. That's the same thing happened to uh Emmett Till and George Steeney. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We reading them about the real OGs, the original gangsters. Okay, <laughs> that we reading about. All right, read on. Got him, God. He also called for help from white residents in neighboring counties, among them a group of about five hundred Ku Klux Klan members who were in Gainesville for a rally. Hey Amen. The first gang members, their bandanas were all, all white. With white, all white pillowcases. Okay? The first game members had white bandanas. <laughs> had white pillowcases, man, over their face. Those were the first game members. And guess what? They were the first Christians, too. I people want to be like what well, I want to be like these Ku Klux Klan members who were Christians and who was gangsters, man. And still are gangsters. Ain't nothing changed. They, they just they just legal gangsters. They they gangsters legally. You're the illegal gangster though, but they are legal gangsters. They get away with gang banking. You don't get away with gang banking. You're not allowed to gang bang, black man. The white man is allowed to gang bang. Why? Because he made the laws. His his laws. He can be, he can twist his laws to be a gang member and gang bang on black and Hispanics. Man, you can't do nothing. Okay. You're not a gang member. And when you try to be a gang member, white people remind you who is the original gangsters when they lock your black behind up. Okay? They destroyed Rosewood and got away with it, man. And those people from Rosewood, some of them lived till they was 80 or 90 years old and they were still scared to, stay, to tell that story because they are afraid of the original gangsters. Who is a damn white man, man? The goddamn Ku Klux Klan, the goddamn police, the governors, the judges, them the real gang members, man. Y'all need y'all 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 niggas ain't no gangsters, man. Y'all gangsters, man. The white man the real gangster. When he gang bangs, he get away with it, man. You don't get away with nothing. Read on, Ward. Come on, come. The white mobs prowled the area woods, searching for any black man they might find. Salathia. Now, it's not even about the brother that made the assault, that she accused made the assault. Now it's just any brother that they find. And that's the nature of the white man today. You know hey, man? I, and, and also, what do gang members do, man, when they want to kill somebody? Gang members will shoot your mama house up. They don't care who's in the house, right? They don't care who they kill. When they're looking for you, they'll kill whoever close to you, whoever's in your family, whoever look like you. They will kill a man. But who do they who did they get this nature from? They get it from the white man. We read about it right now. Reading about it right now. Now they're not looking, now they're looking for the man, but they kill whoever is black now. They're taking out on black people now. All right. We we reading about the real mob. The real gangsters, man, of America. Or if if I could too, sir, like you know, that's that's their nature to this day in 2022. Like, if something go down, like a, a crime is committed, you know, 
they go and hunt for any black man because to them, every black man fit the description. You see what I'm saying? So that's their nature back then. That's still their nature today. Damn right, warrior. That's heavy. That's heavy, warrior. Damn right. That's what they. That's their nature, man. They. They are the original gangsters. I call them the OGs. <laughs> we the Israelites, man. That's who we are. I mean, we ain't no goddamn gangsters. Man. Go ahead and read, warrior. Kind of kind. It says. Law enforcement found out that a black prisoner named Jesse Hunter had escaped a chain gang and immediately, I mean, so like it, and immediately designated him a suspect. See? The, the mobs. Okay. The mobs focused their searches on Hunter, convinced that he was being hidden by the black residents. Salaki. Now, a black man broke out of prison, right? And they said, okay, he, he did this. This black man who broke out of prison, he did this. They, they assuming that this black man who broke out of prison did this, but they have no facts, right? They're assuming that this black man did it. Okay, he did it. But let's let's read the story. Come on, come on. Searches, says Aaron Carrier. Searches were led by dogs to the home of Aaron Carrier in Rosewood. Carrier was the nephew of Sarah Carrier, who did the laundry for Taylor. The white men dragged Carrier out of his house, tied him to a car, and dragged him to the summer, where he was cut loose and beaten. Hey, let me tell you something. The things they did to us in slavery, all the torture they did to us in slavery, Shirazza, did any blood or crip, did any blood or crip tie white people or tie anybody to a tree and beat their back end with a whip? Did any gang member, did any crip of blood that's black or Hispanic sit their dogs on somebody and let the, and let the dogs eat them alive? You're on mute, sir. Uh, did you hear me? Con, you said the last thing you said, let them dogs eat them alive. I said, now, did any, yeah, put your phone, take on mute, okay. Did, I said, did any cripple blood sit their dogs on anybody, white or black? Doesn't matter. Did any black cripple blood or Hispanic gang member Sit their dogs on somebody and let, and let their dogs eat them alive. Now you, uh -huh. you go ahead and ask. The, the things they did to us in slavery, man, was horrific. Was terrible. These are the real gangsters, man. We, we read, we're reading about game banging right now. Real game banging. The white man be doing the real who riding. What does it say in California? That, that who riding? <laughs> that who banging? That gang banging? They they are the real original gangsters, man. All right? The, the white man put a rope to his brother's leg and dragged him way to a whole nother city. Can you imagine the burnt marks on that brother? If you being drugged on the road, you going to have some burnt marks, ain't you? You're going to be scared up from the road, right? And they draw this brother from Rosewood all the way to another city. They beat him again. Let's, let's read on and see what else they did to this brother. All right, go ahead. 
Casa. Sheriff Walker intervened. You know, if I could, that's that's the same thing they did to Emmett Till. They went to the brother's house, took the little boy, tied him up inside of some warehouse, you know what I'm saying, and tortured him, threw him in a lake, you know, shot him in the head. You know, his mom said that she went to the funeral and looked in the casket and could see the, the, the daylight from the other side of his head. Couldn't even recognize her son, what they did to that, that little boy, man. That's heavy, bro. Emmett, Emmett, Emmett Till died from whistling at a white woman. <laughs> Damn, I mean, I mentioned it again. The white woman. <laughs> Back in slavery, man, after slavery, they say after slavery, but we still in slavery. I'm going to say after the Civil War, Negroes were still dying. Niggas were still in slavery, man. And we were dying behind white women, man. White women was getting us killed. Read on. Connor McCon. Sheriff Walker intervened, putting Carrier in his car and driving him to Gainesville, where he was placed under the protective custody of the sheriff there. Sam, Sam Carter. Another mob showed up at the home of blacksmith Sam Carter, torturing him until he admitted that he was hiding Hunter and agreed to take them to the hiding spot. Hey, man. Hey, that, that sounds gangster, don't it? That don't sound gangster? <laughs> That sounds gangster, man. That's what gangsters do. Don't gangsters kidnap people? Don't gangsters kidnap people and throw them in the trunk? And close the trunk and take them to another destination and torture them until they get the truth? That's some gangster stuff right there, right? That, that is gangster. This is where gangsters get their behavior from. They get it from the white man. They get it from the Ku Klux Klan. Okay? Read. Kind of a concert. Also, just like this lady said she wasn't raped, the lady that the lady that accused Emmett Till came out years later, old and crippled and de decrepit, and said that Emmett Till never even whistled at her. But nobody charged her with a crime for lying and getting this little boy murdered and tortured. She still, she's probably still alive right now. You know what I mean? And these 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 cops, they're the same way today. You know what I'm saying? With that no knock warrant, you know, they bust down your door. They're a bunch of criminals. They'll bust down your door with no warrant, bust your door down and and armed with military equipment, AR-15s and shotguns, and point them at your kids, wake the whole house up, and and tell you later, oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong house. And you can't do nothing about it. It's a lucky award. Hey, uh, and also, you know, after they say it was wrong, what else, what else do they do? What else do they do after they say they wrong? They give you a little bit of money. They give you a gift. And now, once they give you this gift, they might, they might write a story or come out with a movie about what they did to you. Not like they did these people in Rosewood. They came out with a movie called Rosewood. All right? But do that supposed to fix or repair what they have done? Money or, or they stupid behind movie cannot repair all the blood that they shed it in Rosewood, man. It cannot repair, it cannot fix, it cannot correct what they have done. What that white mob, what the white aggressive white people did in Rosewood, that money could not fix what they have done, man. Okay? But the Bible says oppression should make a wise man mad, but the gift destroys the heart. Black people gonna take that gift and years down the road say we forgive them. We forgive them, man.
But that you shouldn't let that gift make you forget what happened to your people. Let me tell you something. You can't pay white people no damn money if you mess with one of them. White people want blood if you kill one of their peoples. All right? White, white people, they get wise and very smart when you kill one of them. You better add Saudi Arabia, better add Japan when they drop bombs on Hiroshima. I mean, this is what white people do. You can't pay them for their forgiveness. White people do not forgive. And neither should we. All right. A read on one. Connor Khan, sir. I, I just got to say one more thing. I don't want to leave out, you know, the killing of Breonna Taylor. Remember Breonna Taylor? They they did the same thing, man. They those uh, it was seven police officers forced entry into her apartment, man, and killed the sister, man, because of a, a, a drug dealing operation. You know what I'm saying? Killed the sister, forced entry, bunch of criminals, man. But they want you to forgive them. Right. They want you to forgive them. They expect for you to be a good Christian and show them the love of Jesus and forgive your enemy. Forgive them, man. <laughs> we cannot forgive them because they keep doing the same thing over and over again. Okay? Your forgiveness belongs to your people. It belongs to your brothers and your sisters. It don't belong to white people. You can't forgive your enemy. Okay, you have to always remember he's your enemy, and you have to have love for your people, man. Okay, us being white people is the reason why we dying right now. Us loving white people is the reason why we have nothing. Us loving white people is the reason why Rosewood got burnt to the ground. Okay, by letting one of my family stay amongst us, we we cannot. Hey, I can't stand black people that say all white people ain't bad. You got some white people that's good. Man, I don't trust no white people. Because if you do, you're going to end up like the city called Rosewood. Okay? By letting one white family remain amongst your community, man, is dangerous. Okay? We, and we always must remember Rosewood, Black Wall Street, all these places that got destroyed behind the white man and the white woman. All right, so read warrior. Khan on Khan. Carter led them into the woods, but when Hunter failed to appear, someone in the mob shot him. His body was hung on a tree before the mob moved on. Damn, so they shot the man and they hung him. The man was already dead. They hung the dead man. Oh man, they hung and they, they shot the man and they hung. I mean, but these are the people we forgive. Yeah, I mean, you, you get. Come, come. The sheriff's office had attempted and failed to break up white mobs and advised black workers to stay in their places of employment for safety. Mm. So the police cannot protect the police can't protect and serve, huh? <laughs> and and um the place called uh, Rosewood, right? They cannot protect and serve black or so-called African Americans. Uh why couldn't they uh protect black people at this time? They didn't want to. And why didn't they want to? Because they 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 working together. That's right. You correct. And also, they not for the kill of another white man to protect a black man. Okay, they not for the kill of another uh, a white woman or a white child to protect your black behind. They're ready to shoot you, or they're ready to tell you to stay at your job or go get out of town. You, they're basically telling black people, you got no protection from me. You better hide. You better run or you better hide. Because we're not protecting you. We protect white people. All right?
Sarah Carrier. As many as 25 people, mostly children, had taken refuge in the home of Sarah Carrier when on the night of January 4, armed white men surrounded the house in the belief that Jesse Hunter was hiding there. Shots were fired in the ensuing confrontation. Sarah Carrier was shot in the head and died, and her son Sylvester was also killed by a gun wound. Two white attackers were also killed. So even though it's lucky, so even though back in segregation, we did we did um have white people or just one group of white people standing amongst us. We we still had some kind of fight in us, man. Okay, we had some kind of fight in us to the point where it was two white people that died, but these two white people that died caused more anger, <clears throat> more wrath that gonna come from the white man. And we're gonna read about it, okay? But just imagine if they would have kept them white people that had that general store out of Rosewood. Rosewood would still be up today. Rosewood would still exist if they kept Rosewood all the way 100% black. And that's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants us to keep our communities 100% black and brown, like He intended it to be. The Lord always wanted us to stay. Away from white people. You know what I mean? He don't mind us doing business with the other nations, but he don't want us doing business or communicating with white people. Okay? And he said this in the Bible. And this, and this is what happens when you do business with the white man. Or you compromise to their will or their philosophies or be friends with them. You're going to fall, man. You're going to fall because they are snakes. Okay? They are not to be trusted. They are the wicked according to the Bible. Got something to say, Warden? I don't come. Go ahead. No, I'm too up, sir. Okay, you go ahead and read. Want keep reading? You gotta put your mic on mute. Yes, you gotta put your mic on mute. Uh, but you you go ahead and read. The gun battle and standoff lasted overnight. It ended when the door was broken down by white attackers. The children inside the house escaped through the back and made their way to safety through the woods where they hid. Rosewood violence escalates. News of the standoff at the Carrier House spread, with newspapers inflating the number dead and falsely reporting bands of armed black citizens going on a rampage. So the newspaper made it slacky. The newspaper made it more worse. The newspaper over exaggerated what happened. Matter of fact, they told lies. Okay. They said black people was like just uh, killing white people, but black people was defending themselves against white people from killing them. That's what black people was doing. Black people was defending themselves. They have every right to defend themselves, man. Okay? These damn angry white gangsters surrounded their house and started shooting up their house. You mean to tell me I, I'm supposed to just let you shoot up my house and don't protect my children? Don't protect innocent, innocent kids? This is the mind of the white man. This is the mind of these gangsters, man. They want to say that you're evil for protecting yourself from, from them killing you. Okay? We don't worry. Come on, sir. I got a scripture, too, for what he said. Go ahead falsely reporting bands of armed black citizens going on a rampage like the white man is a liar man and that's all he does is lie lie about he does that right now to this day when he does his little police report on when he arrests you just like what he did to Terrell Bradley after he done sent the canine on the on the brother 
tore the brother eyeballs out. The canine ate the brother's eyeballs out his socket, half of his hands, his fingers, and then lie on the police report and said the brother ran a stop sign and there was no stop sign there. You see what I'm saying? And this is the, this is their nature, man. They're a bunch of liars. I got Psalms 58 and 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 58 and verse 3. It Go says, ahead. The wicked are estranged. So like the wicked are estranged from the womb they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies they're like the wicked man the wicked that you know the wicked is talking about esau you know what i mean that's what it's talking about it's talking about esau that's who the wicked is you know what i'm saying that you know precept is john chapter 9 and 24 it says they are estranged from the womb man they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. That's his nature. You this this these type of people, man, they don't speak the truth. They lie about everything. They are the father of lies, man. Their, their words are smooth as butter as oil. You know what I mean? They'll tell you, um, they'll tell you you have the right to remain silent or whatnot, and then they'll interrogate you, man. With, without your lawyer present. Remember what happened to those brothers, the Central Park Five? Like, they break their own laws. The laws that they, they tell you to follow, they break them. They take little 15, 13 year old boys and interrogate them without their parents and tell these boys to lie and say that they committed a crime that they did not commit and lock those little boys up. Damn right. Damn right, man. Damn right. It's heavy with you brought out, Warrior. They do tell lies, man. Hey, I'd like, I like for you to uh, read that scripture again. The wicked are strange. Um, because that's a, that's a, a real good piece up to bring out around this time that uh, what we read inside this article. It's very, uh, it's very vital that you brought that out, man. Because that's what they do. They, they write up their own police reports. They write up lies. Just so you can be convicted, just so they can make you look like the villain, make you look like the criminal the whole time. It's, it's the criminal writing up the police report. So read it. Donald Khan, Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Slocky, do you know what estranged mean? Estranged, E S. T R A N G E D. It's strange. It's strange means to be alienated. Alienated. Okay. What, what, what could be another word for alienated in, in this context right here? The wicked, are, are, they are born alienated from the womb, man. Right? They are born different. They are born odd. They're weird. They're not right. They're not normal. Okay? The way that these damn devils come out of the womb, the wicked, is not normal. It's not, it's not, uh, I mean, it's, it's real strange. That's why you got the word strange in them. Because how can a baby come out the womb lying, man? A baby don't know right from wrong, right? But not this baby. <laughs> not this baby. Not this child. This damn child, all it knows how to do is goddamn lie. Right? All this damn child knows how to do is be evil and wicked. That's the white man. He is a vessel of Satan. And his, his history shows it. We're reading it right now. We're reading about Rosewood. We're reading about how he tied his brother leg up with a piece of rope attached to a car and drug him from Rosewood to another city, man, and still shot him in the goddamn head, man. Isn't that weird? Isn't that strange? Come on, man. Let's read on. 
got on con and like you said sir you know what i mean like shoot uh genesis 25 and 25 esau was estranged from from the womb man you see he was alienated from us man he's not you know what i'm saying he was born with a completely different spirit from us he's estranged from the room he came out red so he is not your brother in the spirit you know what i mean it says I'm, I'm right, Roy. Sloggy. That's right. They don't have the spirit we got. We have we both we both are, as black and Spanish, we we both have the spirit of the Lord, man. Right? And you know what spirit the, the white man is supposed to have. Because the Bible says he's the vessel of dishonor. All right. He's the vessel of Satan. He was created to promote sin. To promote wickedness, to promote evil, man, to promote destruction. That's why he is called the son of perdition, man. In the Bible, the man of sin. Okay? When you see all these gay part cartoons on TV, all these cartoon characters becoming gay, every black TV show becoming gay, that's the white man doing that crap, man. Because he's the man of sin. Right, you better ask your child when he come home from school or when she come home from school. What the hell you learn today in class? You better make sure that they don't have not one ounce of homosexuality in their mind from these damn white school teachers, man. They teaching your they teaching your child about the alternative lifestyle, man. That style of life is not the alternative, man. There's no alternative. When it comes to being straight, if God made you a woman or a man, there's no alternative to that. You're a damn man. And you're a woman. And if you want to change that, you got a mental illness, man. You got a mental illness. Something is wrong with you. You're trying to be like your oppressor who is estranged from the womb, man. Who was born alienated. Who was born wicked. God said, well, I made cricket. Who can make Straight. Ecclesiasticus 7 and 12, or I think it might be 13. I'm paraphrasing. But read Warrior, or if you got anything to say, you go ahead and say it. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, and verse 10. Never trust thy enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Go ahead. You want me to break it down? Yeah, go ahead, Warren. You brought it out. Go ahead. Man, you know, like the scriptures say, don't trust your enemy. And if, if you read the Bible, you would know who your enemy is. You know what I'm saying? The Bible tells you who your enemy is. It tells you your enemy is Esau, man. And the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, um, 48, um, 68. And it, and, and it also tells you that these other nations are your enemies. Scriptures say, never trust thy enemy, man. For like as iron rust is, so is his wickedness. Iron rust, iron will rust. A white man will hate you. You understand? He's gonna he's gonna tell you, hey, God loves everybody. Why can't we just go and get along? You know what I'm saying? Just like iron rust, you best believe that hatred is in him. He hates you. He's only he's only just because he he friendly with you because you you working for him and you building his kingdom up. You understand? That's the only reason why he he even smile with you and he's happy with you because you are on the bottom. You understand? Right. And also, when the white man say God love everybody, I, I spoke about this uh, yesterday. When God say, well, not God, God, when the white man say, when the white man say I love everybody, he's saying that basically because I won. I got the whole world. I got the whole earth. I mean, I do love you. I do love the things that you do. I love how you built America. I love how you worship me. I love how you hate yourself. 
And, but you love me more. The white man loves how you destroy yourself in this place, man. He doesn't, he doesn't love you as a person or as a nation. He loves you in your destroyed state. He loves you how you inhale, man, and how you love being a slave. The white man loves that. Yeah. And also, when the white man says, I love everybody, just remember, you, you three-fifths of a human being. You're not everybody. You're not considered a human being, according to the Constitution. So when he said he loves everybody, he's not talking about you. He, he don't consider you a man. All right? Go ahead, Ward. Call him, call him. Even more white men poured into the area, believing that a race war had broken out. Some of oh, the first. Oh man! So, so by when a newspaper, when a newspaper promoted all over the earth, promoted that black people was uh, retaliating or black people was killing white people, more white gang members came to Rosewood. More, more white mob members, the Italian mafia, Ku Klux Klan, came to Rosewood. To get down, to gang bang, right? And guess what? The police was helping them by not doing nothing. And right now, guess what? When white people shoot you today, what happened? Police do nothing. No you know what police do? They go buy some Burger King or get them a bottle of water like they did down the roof. But let you go shoot one, let, let you go shoot a white church up. Watch what happened to you. I guarantee you. That you get some rounds of bullets. Okay? I guarantee they do something to you. They're not gonna go buy you, they're not gonna go buy you Burger King or McDonald's or give you a bottle of water. You're gonna get a beat down before you go to jail. They might put their canine on you and you might not have a damn eye. You might not have a left eye. You might be seeing out of one eye, man. That's what a white man do. All right, that's what he does. That's what the, the original gangsters do. Go ahead, Ward. Come on, come. Some of the first targets of this influx were the churches in Rosewood, which were burnt down. Houses were then attacked. Sloggy, Ward. Sloggy, Ward. It, it said, uh, we had again about the influx and the first places that was attacked in Rosewood. Oh, you gotta put your, uh, sorry, put your uh, thing on mute. Yeah, I said, uh, read about the influx and uh, the first places that got attacked in Rosewood. Okay, first of all, let's read what influx means the definition of influx. Khan, Khan, the definition of influx and arrival or entry of large numbers of people or thing mm -mm -mm. so a uh, slacky so a large number of white christians because the Ku Klux Klan's are uh, these white mobsters these white aggressive people all of them were christians okay so right now god do not love everybody <laughs> in this context these, white, these are white Christians coming to kill black Christians. What happens to God loves everybody? Huh? Read? Or oh, I don't know if you got something to say. Nah, sir, I'm to walk. All right, you go ahead and read. Kind of will come. Uh, Some of like you like and that's why I saw a point in for Christians to learn about this story. If you were a Christian, you need to hear us, me and my Bishop about how the first places that was attacked in Rosewood was the Christian church. Was the Christian church. Because you need to put this in your mind. When white people decide they want to start killing black people again, when the race wars get out of hand, the first place they're going to go to is them Christian churches. Because the Christian church let white people in. They let white people in. 
And that's the, that's the easiest place to go kill black people. Because guess what? They end up praising white people by praising white Jesus. And they know where they go attack at first. Let's go to the place where they worship us at. They wouldn't mind being a sacrifice to white Jesus. And they, and they was a sacrifice to white Jesus that day. <laughs> there was a sacrifice. They got killed. Them white people killed them black people and, and praise God. They praise white Jesus for you dying. You know how many times white, black, white people that killed black people and, think, and say God was down with it? You better read, you better read about uh, Manifest Destiny. Manifest Destiny was a white man saying God approves me of killing Native, Native American Indians out west. He, he approved me. He gave me the blessing to kill Native American Indians that's the, that stay out west. Out there in Oklahoma. California, uh, Arizona, Oregon, anything out west, the Lord say that he, he, he blesses me. He chose me to kill his people and move my empire westward. And when the white man killed those people in them churches, he had in his mind, why Jesus, why Jesus is why Jesus is down with me killing these black folks. That's what they think in their mind, man. Go ahead, read on. Donald McCall. And um and and it's happening today, man. Like with the um they attack the churches. That's what the, the that's why the Lord called us, that's why he said we sheep. Because we we sitting in the churches just like sheep, waiting to be slaughtered, singing and dancing like a bunch of weak sheep. Just in the church, you know what I mean? And thinking that singing, dancing, and praying to white Jesus is what's going to save you. And that's not what's going to help you. This is why Dylan Roof was targeted the church. This is why that white boy targeted, you know, um, those brothers and sisters in, in Buffalo, New York. He even said he scouted out the area and he knew that, you know, these, these you know, vulnerable black people were going to be there they look for the weakest they never come into the projects to do that they're not going to come to where they know strong brothers is at you know what i mean they're not going to do that they're always going to go to the weak and vulnerable of uh, blacks and hispanics and native indians hey warrior that's heavy too because that's what a predator do that's what a predator do like a lion when he hunts a gazelle or he hunts the wildebeest, he looks for the weakest one first. Okay? He looks for the easy target first so he can fill his belly. And that's how the white man thinks. He thinks just like a predator. Okay? Like I said one time before, the white man is the super predator. He called us predators, but we are not predators. He are the super predators. He hunt our steps, man. So we can't go out in our streets. Okay? And he looks for the weak. Who's the weak amongst black people? Christians. Who could be labeled Christians? People who smoke weed, drug dealers, homosexuals, okay? Those, these are the people that he take into his jailhouses, like a drug dealer. Somebody want to be a game man, okay? What, what happens to him? He end, up, he end up high selling the white man's drugs. And guess what? When you sell a white man's drug or either you smoke them, you took his bait. Now you made a truck. And now you're being hunted. And now he has a right to put you in jail. If the white man stopped somebody from the ISUPK, how can he put us in jail? Because we don't do drugs. We don't sell though. He, he gotta let us go, right? He had to let us go because we don't fall to his bait, to his traps. Okay? We we know that his culture is poison to us, man. And we stay the hell away from the white man. Okay? That's why brothers in the ISBK is not going to go to jail when the police stop us. Because we know not to talk back and try to get slick out the mouth. We know, this is, okay, sir. Okay, sir. You right. And let him go on by his business. Because we know that this damn devil want to kill us, man. But our people don't Our people don't know that. Our people think white people don't want to kill them. Are not they, White people are not their enemies. 
But I hope after you read this story of Rosewood, the, the Rosewood massacre, that you learn that white people is your natural enemies, man. Connor Wakan. Some of the first targets of this influx were the churches in Rosewood, which were burnt down. Houses were then attacked, first setting fire to oh, so like you, world. They burnt down the church. They burnt down the church, man. Damn, I don't need Christians. But they burn down the church. These Christians sound like gang members, right? <laughs> All right. And, and let me tell you something. Mostly every blood and every crypt is a Christian. Just like the cool cuss clan, man. All right. Read on. Come on, come on. <clears throat> Houses were then attacked first setting fire to them, and then shooting people as they escaped from the burning buildings. That's just like, man, I just, I just picture in my mind, like, like a, uh, like a place full of sheep, you know what I mean? And the wolf come and water, when the wolf come, you, you ever see? Okay, they tie a they tie fire to a, a a fox's tail, and set the fox inside the the place where the sheep are, and the sheep begin to scatter, and the wolf is outside just waiting and hunting them down as they run out the building. That's all I picture in my mind, man. That's like it's or that's heavy, man. And heavy what you brought out. Um, let's get uh Jeremiah 23 and 1. I mean, and you uh you go ahead and break that down. I gotta use the restroom, all right? But let's let's let's, let's bring out uh Jeremiah 23 and 1. Bob Book of Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. So I guess so you're on mute. No, I'm gonna need you to take over. Gotta use the restroom. Let's take over real quick. All right. Connor McCon. We're going to read Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. You see, like the Lord compare us to sheep. He compare his people. That's, woe means destruction, first of all. That's an old English word for destruction. Woe be unto the pastors. Why would God say the pastors like destruction unto the pastors and if if all these pastors were out here doing the work of the lord like they claim they doing they don't know what the hell they talking about you understand these pastors are selling you a dream it's just all about money you know what i mean they don't know what the hell they talking about they go to a school this theological school whatever school they go to the you to learn about god or whatnot and they go learn from a white man you know what I'm saying? And come and tell you that Christ is a white boy and that you got to listen to them and do this and whatnot. I don't know what the hell they're talking about in that Christian church. You got a whole big old book full of words and you sitting up in there singing and dancing all day. And God says, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Go ahead, sir. Okay, the Bible says, woe to the pastors that scatter my sheep. Like you were saying earlier, man, uh, Rosewood at this time, when all these black people were sitting inside the church, they remind you of sheep, right? And these sheep were being scattered by that fox with his tail being on fire. And the wolves waiting on side for these sheep to come out those church, the church doors, all right? 
is because that pastor is the fox with his tail on fire. <laughs> that pastor is the, is the fox with his tail on fire scattering the Lord's sheep to these wolves, okay? And who are the wolves? All the rest of these nations. When you have pastors teaching about uh, being a Baptist, being a Pentecostal, being whatever, man, that has to do with Christianity, you are spreading the Lord's people to the wolves, to white people. If you in Islam, a damn Muslim, and you are teaching your teaching your people about Islam, you are scattering the Lord's sheep to Arabs. You get what I'm saying? These pastors or these black leaders, today's black leaders are scattering God's sheep. Okay? When you smoke weed, when you smoke weed and you promote the uh, culture of smoking weed, you are serving an East Indian God named Shiva. You are scattering the Lord's sheep to East Indians, man. When you tell people that Samson had dreadlocks, this person in the body had dreadlocks. Uh, you are having your people scattered to the East Indians, man, because Shiva has dreadlocks, man. Okay? We got to be careful what we practice in America, man, and what we pick up. Because if the Lord don't have it in the Bible, best believe if you pick these things up from the heathen, these heathens, their culture is tied to their gods, man. So when you pick up their culture, you also pick up their gods. And woe to these pastors, destruction to these pastors who teach our people to go and serve other religions, other cultures, other gods, man, and not the God of this Bible. Go ahead, Warren. Right. right. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. Now, uh, we, 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 we go to the article now. Cause we uh we run a low on time. But it says Lexi Gordon was one of those murdered, taking a gunshot to her face as she hid under her burning house. Gordon had sent her children fleeing when white attackers approached, but suffering from typhoid fever, she stayed behind. Uh, typhoid fever is a fever that uh, it breaks out on your chest like little small red bumps break out on your chest, man. And uh, it, you have headaches and you have flu like symptoms. That's typhoid, typhoid fever. Okay, we on. Kind of come. Many Rosewood citizens fled to the nearby swamps for safety, spending days hiding in them. Some attempted to leave the swamps, but were turned back by men working for the sheriff. Hmm. James Carrier, brother of Sylvester and son of Sarah, did manage to get out of the swamp and take refuge with the help of a local uh, turpentine factory manager. A white mob found him anyhow and forced him to dig a grave for himself before murdering him. Good night. Yeah, that sounds like some Italian, some Italian mob stuff right there, man. Yeah, that's some gangster stuff. All right. I don't care how hard black and Spanish try to be gangsters, you can never outbeat the white man being a gangster because he is the original gangster. Like I've been saying, this whole class, we reading about the real gangsters and what real gangsters do, okay? The real uh, uh, epitome of evil, man. Who is a white man? The devil the Bible speaks of. Go ahead, Warren. Right. Others found help from white families willing to shelter them. John and William Bryce. Some black women and children escaped thanks to 
I want to say something about that too, where it says others found help from white families willing to shelter them. Like, don't think for a minute that, oh, the white man, you know, uh, some good white people, some bad. Listen, man, it don't even matter because the Bible says, Salakia, the Bible says, prepare slaughter, you understand, for his children, it's Isaiah 14, 21, for the iniquity of his fathers. Like, good and bad, uh, uh, good and bad of of us, Blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians, went into slavery. So the scripture also say, Dohan join, Dohans join hand in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, man. So listen, man, don't think for a minute just because, you know what I'm saying, you see in the story where, you know, um, a couple of Edomites try to help us, and shelter us, that don't mean a damn thing. You understand? That's all I want to say, sir. Damn right. Damn right. But pass slaughter for his children, man. Why? Because his children is him. He is his children, man. The Bible teaches about reincarnation, regeneration. There's no such thing as hell under the ground, man. You come back in this world in a new body, man, through your children, through your seed, man. These devils come back. Okay? And that's what you must remember. The Christian church teaches you to live one, you only got one life, so live it all up. You better live your life up and be happy. No, you better, you better live right so you can come back in the truth, man. All right? You better, you better live a righteous life so the Lord can have mercy on you, man. And you come back in his truth. Or you might come back as a Christian. You know what I mean? Being strong out on drugs. I mean, being raped by that Christian pastor. Anything, man. Come back blind. It's so important that you come into this truth and keep the laws and the commandments of God, man. Because they lie to you about hell. Hell is on earth, man. And we're reading about hell right now. Rosewood was hell, man. It was hell. Them, them, them people was going through hell. Being tied to a rope and drugged from Rosewood to another city, man. And then get shot in the head, man. And getting lynched. They was killing children, black kids, man. That is hell. And guess who's the devil in this hell that we live in? The white man. The whole time you think you're going to get a daughter see the devil? You, you see the devil every day when you go on your job and work for him. You see the devil every day when he is shooting now young black brothers in these streets, man. And, and putting their canine dogs on them. And their canine dogs is eating their damn eye out of their socket, man. That's the devil that tortures you. Hell, man. Right? You ain't got to die waiting to go on your grave and then you be on the ground being tortured forever. Black people been being tortured by this white man for thousands of years, man. Even when Christ was on this earth, he had white people torturing his people then, man. Okay? White people have always been our enemies, man. Always been our enemies. Always been torturing us. And they're going to take Christ to come back to save us from them. That is salvation, man. But until then, we would, the white man going to make sure that we never have black communities like Black Wall Street. You know what I mean? Oh, like Rosewood, where we were successful, man, without them. They don't like when they see black people together. That's where they come at us at camp. They come at us at camp and want to take down the camp. Want to come and throw down our signs and want to fight us. Because white people don't like to see black and Hispanic people together, man. Because when they see us together, it's a threat to America. It's a threat to their heaven, man. Okay? And we must understand and realize that that's our way out of this place by us coming together, man. We can't come together being Christians because Christians love white people and they want white people to be joined with us. And Christian entity is the problem, man. All right. Go ahead, Ward. Kind of a con. John and William Bryce. Some black women and children escaped thanks to John and William Bryce, two wealthy brothers who own a train. Aware of the violence in Rosewood, 
and familiar with the population, the brothers drove their train to the area and invited escapees. Though refused to take in black men, afraid of being attacked by white mobs. Many of those who fled by train had been hidden in the home of the white general store owner, John White, and continued to do so throughout the violence. Sheriff Walker helped terrified residents make their way to Wright, who then arranged escape with the help of the Bryce brothers. Florida's reaction. Florida Governor Kerry Hardy offered to send the National Guard to help, but Sheriff Walker declined to help, believing he had the situation under control. You see that? You see what's going on? Now, since we've been reading this story, I know that everybody understands that he did not have this situation under control. This situation was out of control. And why it was out of control? Because he never even tried to fix the situation. He let these angry white men kill innocent black people. And now when the government says, do you need help? Do you need help? He said, no, I don't need help. And the government already knew he needed help. But guess what? They down with it too. They down with the killing. They're down with those white Southerners killing black folks. Okay? And he, they, they're, basically, they're basically asking, hey, you straight? Do you, do you, do you need us to make, make you look better? Or you got it? They wasn't coming for black people. They was coming for him. You know what I mean? They, they was coming for white people. You know what I mean? They'll make, they, they, go, they was going to make sure that white people don't get shot. Because remember, it was two white people that got shot by black people, right? So they got concerned when, when white people start dying. It wasn't concerned when black people was dying, but when white when two white people got killed, that's when they got concerned. Okay. Read on. Don't come. Mobs began to disperse after several days, but on January 7th, many returned to finish off the town. Burning what little remained of it to the ground, except for the home of John Wright. A special grand jury and a special uh, persecutor were appointed by the governor to investigate the violence. The jury heard that the testimonies of nearly 30 witnesses, mostly white, over several days but claimed to not find enough evidence for persecution. Wow. The surviving citizens of Rosewood did not return, fearful that the horrific bloodshed would recur. Rosewood ma Massacre Legacy. The story of Rosewood faded away quickly. Most newspapers stopped reporting on it soon after the violence had ceased and many survivors kept quiet about their experience, even to subsequent family members. Okay, you can start like that, Roy. All right. Me and my best brothers, uh, we plan on bringing out a lot of forgotten history in Florida. Uh, but Rosewood is uh, a story that everybody knows about. But they did not know the real deep details about what really happened or, or, or the, the beginnings, the origins of Rosewood. And that's what me and Shabbatiza was bringing up, the origins of Rosewood. What really happened? The black version, not the white version. The Israelite version, okay? Here in the ISBK, uh, these uh, Florida public schools, they, they got rid of critical race theory, but critical race theory still exists in the ISBK, and critical race theory is not going nowhere. And right now, we are teaching critical race theory, all right? Critical race theory remains in the ISBK, and we always going to let these devils know their past. We're going to let them know how they built the miracle. 
and they built America off murder, okay, by keeping us divided. You want to know how you defeat America? By black and Spanish name America, any is uniting, man, and not being divided, okay? Shabbat you got anything to say? You know, you know, I just want to say quickly that, you know, how they, um, how history is important, man, because, you know, the white man, you know, the your history, black man, is, is important. And they they do everything that they can to, to bury your history and sweep it under the rug while they, while they want you to learn their history. They want you to learn about their forefathers. You know what I'm saying? Mount Rushmore with their heads on it. Is that what it is? The the mountain with the president's head and all that? They want you to learn 4th of July, all of their garbage. But they want you to forget about yours and sweep it under the rug like it never happened. You know what I'm saying? And this is why you don't know who your enemy is. You know what I'm saying? Why these atrocities keep happening to us every, every day. You understand? And they don't even bring it out on the news. Half of the things that's going on. They don't bring it out on the news. So that's all I have, sir. Damn right, boy. Damn right. Uh, the next class is going to be about uh, the Jim Crow laws, man. The Jim Crow laws and um, the origin of black codes. Jim, the Jim Crow laws come from the black codes, okay? And we're going we gonna to teach about that next, this week coming up. That that uh, class is gonna be real heavy, real heavy, and um, I can't wait till uh we bring it out and, and put it put it on YouTube, man. We got some very very important information to bring out about that class, okay? And with that, we got Israelite School and University of Knowledge on the Commander Journey in Hunter. We start out at One West, 125th Street, Hunter, New York. Shalom.